And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon, you nerd. Hey, it's Mike from 424recording.com, and in today's video, we're talking part three of making your own cassette tapes at home. In this video, we're gonna be talking specifically about producing, printing, cutting your own artwork, and what kind of cases you need for your release. There's a few different types of cases available. The first is Norelco, which is the ones, probably the most common ones that you see out there. These come in a couple different varieties. They're plastic, and then sometimes there's like a black here, white, that could be different colors. The next type is cardboard sleeves. And you see these with singles, or maybe somebody just made their own cardboard boxes for their tapes. Now, there's also poly, which are kind of those glazed, plasticky, bendy sort of ones. And I think there's other types out there too. Something else you need to consider when making your own tapes is printing onto the tapes themselves. How are you gonna get your information onto these tapes? Do you even wanna get information onto their tapes? I think there's something cool about just a blank tape personally, but a lot of professional tapes have some sort of ink, silk screen. There's a couple different choices and it will depend on whether you're going for a pro look or more of a DIY vibe. For my first release, I just used a Sharpie and literally wrote B, A, on some tapes and on other tapes I did write the band name to see what it would look like and it came out okay. You know, I think this would be suited for certain types of music and certain types of projects and you know, it's a, it's a cheap way to go about it because chances are you have a Sharpie at home. A more elegant solution is one that Jason from Painted Blonde uses, which is he literally orders stamps for each thing that he's going to print on the tapes. Another cost to consider when you're making your own tapes, but Damn, it looks good. Another method that people use, I believe, on tapes is, is silk screening and setting up screens that would enable you to, you know, press some ink onto this and allow it to dry, etc., and, you know, have some ink on your tapes. I mean, this can be a little bit of a messy process if you haven't done this before, but it's also pretty fun to do, and I guess it just, it just depends on how you can burn the screen and if you have experience with burning screens and uh, silk screening t-shirts. It can kind of have either like an elegant look or a more, you know, grungy, dirty look depending on how you go about it and how it comes out and your skill level of, of silk screening. One other thing I've seen people do, which is pretty cool, is, is have some sort of sticker template for these. You can probably print stuff out on your computer. Uh, you can probably get stickers that are, you know, for certain areas of the tape. I've, I, I've seen those before. I'm sure you have too on like mixtapes and things like that. And just another way you could do something on here. It depends what you're going for. It depends what your vibe is for the release. You know, I think the most elegant solution is, you know, Jason's uh, stamps that he uses for painted blonde and silk screen is pretty dope too. I never mind it like a little bit of a Sharpie, a little bit here and there, but there's also something really cool about just leaving them blank. Your mileage may vary and depending on what you want to do, it's something to consider. J cards, O cards, what up? Well, there's a basically just a bunch of different types of artwork that you can put into these tapes. So these are the J cards that I made. I just went to a local print shop. I actually had them cut them out, which kind of sucked because it was more expensive. I could have just cut them at home. Uh, you gotta learn how to score them, which basically is just kind of make, uh, not cut them all the way so that they will fold and bend. But this is a very simple J card. It's just, um, probably because it looks like a J like that. And you can get these in different panels. The, the best thing to do for them is to find, uh, just Google templates, Google J card templates, O card templates, and you'll figure out which one you want and you know, which one's easiest for you to do. Can, just keep in mind, it'll take more time to cut them out if you make them more panels. Pretty, pretty obvious, but worth mentioning. Definitely recommend a local print shop for your artwork. Uh, that way you can have them print out a test and see if it'll work. And you know, rather than print stuff out through online companies. And that's also worth mentioning is make sure you make a couple extra of these because these are actually extra of mine because they, you know, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to cut them to make them look clean. And maybe you want extra so you can print them on demand. Home printer possibility. I guess it would be possible to print out your own artwork on something like computer paper, depending on the vibe you're going for, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I use semi-gloss 100 for this. Jason said he uses 65 pound cardstock with a matte finish because he thought the art looked better to his eye. So again, your mileage may vary. I think this is all they had that semi-gloss. I was trying to get matte, but it came out all right, you know? But definitely something else to consider when you're getting your artwork printed up. Power tip is use an X-Acto and a ruler to cut them just so you can get that straight edge and 
I make sure you cut on something that either cardboard box or an old carpet so you're not gonna slip and cut yourself or cut your desk or something that you know is a value to you don't don't lean on like your nice kitchen table to do that because you're probably gonna cut through the art onto the table another thing you could use to cut out your artwork is a paper cutter you can invest in one I think they're about 20 bucks but also some print shops do have a paper cutter for public use or maybe you're somebody who has access to a college that has you know an art room or you know somebody where you can use a paper cutter. If you're gonna be doing a lot, say you're starting your own label, it might not be a bad idea to invest in like a $20 paper cutter so that you can you know, cut out your artwork and it'll probably save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Get extra, because even the most careful person will burn a couple of these. Like I said, Google your preferred template. It'll be very easy to find whatever template you need. I think I use National Audio Company, the templates that they use for their tapes. And I'm sure you can find uh, ton tons of free templates online. I'll try to link a couple. One thing to note is that this is going to require some sort of Photoshop or Illustrator skill set. So if that's not something that you are proficient in, you may need a friend's help or you may need somebody else to do it for you at a cost. I'm sure there's services like Fiverr or uh, I could probably lay out your artwork too for a small fee if you want to hit me up, 424recording at gmail.com. But it's really easy. I think you could figure it out. You could even do it in like preview or something like that. We're talking about the, the card stocks. You know, uh, you're going to want a heavier weight paper than just like, you know, computer paper or something like that. So 100 pounds, 65 pounds, something a little bit a little bit heavier that you can score and that will really you know will make a nice fold and uh have a little substance to it i had to actually go back and forth between the print shop luckily it's pretty close by but weird things can happen with little thumb drives uh depending on how they're set up i was having an issue with the formatting of it i had put a bunch of stuff on there for the print shop brought it down there and they couldn't open it luckily i was able to email it to them as well so now I always email it and bring it on the drive. Make sure you export and save to a few uh, different formats like PNG, JPEG, PSD at 300 DPI uh, when you bring your files to the shop. And for the thumb drive, make sure they're XFAT or FAT32 format. Uh, like I said, some formats don't work between Mac, PC, Linux. So, you know, that's, that's what I ran into and it cost me some time. One thing I think that Jason does that's really amazing from Painted Blonde is he adds so many extra little goodies to his releases. I think over here you can see there's a little pin on my speaker over here. He includes like a pin for his label or his bands, a little art book, which I'll, I'll have to do another. Uh, I'll, actually, let's go grab it real quick. Yeah, so this is some stuff that came with uh, the latest painted blonde tape that I got. You know, he, he includes like some pins, stickers, a uh, little art book, which is like well above and beyond. Uh, oh, more stickers falling out. There's something to be said about extra goodies. It's it's part of the uh, under promise over deliver type of thing. And also it's just, it's really cool to have when you do something DIY, you know, Jason does this amazing art for his releases and puts a lot of work into it. And it's just like another extra little book that you can have and, and hold on to and, and just makes it that much more special, you know? So something to think about is personalization when you're going the DIY route. Uh, and that's really going to, um, you know, people want things that are unique. People want things that are real. They're not just another cog in the machine, you know, they're not just another copy. So whatever you can include to make it different or give people something a little bit extra that they weren't expecting is always uh, a really nice surprise. I would definitely say make sure you, you send a handwritten thank you with each one because it's really cool that somebody took the time to A, listen to your stuff and B, like your stuff enough to want to make, to want to buy a copy of it. That's really fucking cool. So I would say make sure you always leave a little handwritten thank you on there, uh, thanking whoever bought it for buying it. And the sky's the limit, you know? I've seen bands include Polaroids, uh, you could include notebook, lyric pages, uh, other types of ephemera, you know? Anything that was part of the process that, you know, you have sitting around, it would be cool to include it and, and surprise people with. That's what makes it unique. That's what the fun of, I think, doing it yourself is, is kind of like each one you know, each one of these is a little bit different by the way I cut them, you know, it's not perfect. And I think that's kind of the whole aesthetic of, of tapes uh, in terms of the sound and in terms of the types of music that people make and record onto them. And anything that can inform that, I think, is always a, a welcome addition to making your own cassette tapes at home. This is part three. So if you missed part one and two, which was why tapes, uh, and part two, which was recording tapes, everything you need to know about mastering, getting your material onto cassettes, uh, make sure you subscribe and check out those videos and turn on notifications so you know when the final part of the series, part four, 
which is going to be some practical tips about distribution, uh, selling and shipping your tapes. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Jason from Painted Blonde for all of his uh, great ideas and footage that he's been sending over for this series. We'll catch you on the next one. Godspeed, my friends, and make sure you do something you want to do today, all right?